Welcome back to MMA Al Dente. I am the guy who picked Frankie Edgar to defeat Benson Henderson the second time when he got robbed. And I'm here to talk about Tagir Ulambeka versus Cody Durden. Cody Durden is 16-4-1 as a pro. He's 32 years old, and he's giving up three inches of reach to 32-year-old Tagir Ulambekov, who is 14-2. and two. Ulambekov has looked great so far in the UFC. He did lose to Tim Elliott, but it was still a really close fight. That's one of his two losses, uh, the other one being a five-rounder to Zhalgis Zhumagulov, former UFC fighter. And a guy with some real shit luck. And, and a shit haircut as well. Uh, but uh, those are two close fights. The Tim Elliott fight I felt like could have gone either way. And I did think Tagir was definitely the last man standing. And the Zhalgis Jumagulov fight I thought he was really effective at neutralizing Zhalgis. Getting him to the ground and uh, you know taking away uh, his uh, striking. But still Zhalgis was outworking him I thought in that fight. And, of course, he was younger as a fighter, but uh, Tagir, he's only getting more seasoned, hitting his athletic prime now here at 32, as is Cody Durden. And Tagir Ulambekov has proven to be a very good fighter at the UFC level. Some underrated decision wins over Bruno Silva and Alan Nascimento. I think those guys are both above-average fighters. And he got a nice guillotine choke in round one over Nate Maness, uh, who recently got a nice victory. Against whoever the fuck. Uh, but Tagir, you know, he's uh, dangerous not just in round one. He's gotten some great finishes before he got to the UFC. Figure, uh, finished uh, Vartan Asatrian in uh, round four with a guillotine. Asu Amabayev got him out of there in round three. He's a new UFC fighter. Uh, who'd he beat? Tyson, um, Tyson Nam, I believe, in his debut. But uh, Tagir, yeah, Tagir is entering his prime and he's looked really sharp. Uh, dangerous when he needs to be, and uh, quite comfortable fighting for 15 minutes. And uh, he's passed just about every test. Again, that Tim Elliott fight could have gone his way. And uh, he's also uh, weathered some tough fights. You know, Bruno Silva was giving him hell early on, and uh, Tagir was able to tame these guys. Here he's fighting a guy in Cody Durden who's looked vulnerable in some of his losses, but uh, well, most of his losses, but he has looked really phenomenal since his last loss, which I think was to Mohamed Makayev. He has a 16-4-1 and one record. The 16 wins include 6 by knockout, 5 by submission, and 5 by decision. And the 4 losses include 3 by submission, 1 by decision. He uh, lost to a solid veteran, a total journeyman with a 50-50 record, but a lot of experience, Ryan Hollis via rear naked choke in round 2. That was a few years ago. He lost the decision to Jared Scoggins, brother of Justin Scoggins. And since making it to the UFC, he's been tapped twice. Jimmy Flick in his debut with a triangle, or a flying triangle. And Mohamed Makayev with a guillotine in round one after clipping him. He uh, got club and subbed. Clubbed and subbed, I guess. Uh, but that's it for his losses. Also, he had the draw against Chris Gutierrez. That was, I think, his debut. Maybe that or the flick fight. But either way, he gave Chris Gutierrez hell early on, backpacked him, and secured a 10-8 round on two judges' scorecards, and then didn't fall apart down the stretch or even concede a 10-8 round uh, when Chris Gutierrez took over the fight. And he ended up walking away with a draw. Uh, uh, you know, I don't know if anybody brags about a draw, but that's one hell of a draw against a Chris Gutierrez. And it made my estimation of Cody go up as a fighter. And since then, since his last loss to Mohamed Bakayev, we've seen him go on a four-fight winning streak, TKOing J.P. Bays, uh, Bays uh, and then decisions over Carlos Mota, Charles Johnson, and Jake Hadley, most impressively, where uh, Cody has shown, I mean, wrestling, pace, cardio, and submission defense, serious submission defense. Uh, he's really been on point, and my estimation of him as a fighter has skyrocketed over the past year, to be honest. To the point where I'm picking him to win. I do this reluctantly because I do, do think Tagir is much more dangerous. I think he can uh, submit Cody Durden. I think he can do it if he catches him slipping in round one or even in round three. I think he can do it in, in any round. But Cody Durden has that wrestling ability and that 
that overall grappling ability where I think he can uh, score better points against Tagiru and Bekov, kind of follow the Tim Elliott path to victory, securing top position with some well-timed takedowns. And Cody Durden, I think, has a, a really good control uh, where, you know, he can... Uh, I don't know if he's going to take the back like he did against Chris Gutierrez, but I think he can control Uwen Bekov and keep him pinned. And I think he's a guy that's got great cardio where he can be doing this shit again in round three. Based on what he's shown, I still see vulnerability in Cody Durden, but he's shown enough grit and uh, wrestling and cardio where he's my pick to beat Tagir Uwen Bekov. And again, even in the Tim Elliott fight, Tagir was the last man standing in round three, and he's got plenty of deep submissions uh, in his career. So Cody Durden's never going to be out of the woods, but I'm still picking Cody to be uh, the guy that secures more top position and wins the decision. Cody Durden is the pick, plus 145. I uh, bet on that early, and I'll wait to see if uh, they have any uh, submission props for Takir Uwembekov, because I think that's his primary path to victory against Cody Durden. Three of his four losses come via submission, and half of Takir's wins come via submission. In, in uh, as deep as round four. So I'll be looking to that, but for now, with uh, just the bare odds in front of me, Cody Durden is the pick and the play. Like, share, subscribe, all that horse shit. Check out my other videos.